my parents today, they're in Atlanta, Georgia for the graduation of their oldest grandchild, my niece, Erin. And she's the first to go to college and first graduating from college. And she's graduating from Emory University in, in Atlanta. And I'm sure they're asking her a question that probably uh, 6,000 other parents are asking their children graduating from Emory and all around the country right now. They're asking, so what are you going to do exactly? <laughs> I mean, besides pay off all the loans and, and for the next 10 or 20 years of your life, uh, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? So I would like to help you graduates with an answer, a response to that question. What are you going to do? And we find that answer from a, a very special day. I'm not talking about Mother's Day. Today's Mother's Day, but yeah, it's a wonderful day to uh, say, say to mom, I love you, and to bless and give thanks to God for our mothers. Um, as I mentioned before, it's also a sad day because of a, a loss of mothers and have gone before us in, in faith. Um, one of the works of mercy is to pray for the living and the dead. And that's something we can do, especially today, praying for our mothers. It's also a, a day where we're going to be blessing our rosary garden immediately after the 10 o'clock Mass. Around 1130 today, we'll be blessing the rosary garden outside in honor of Mary, uh, the mother of God and the mother of the church. And we'll have the blessing of the rosary garden. Um, so hang around or come back around 1130 for that great moment. So no, that's not the special day I'm talking about to help you graduates um, to answer that question. What are you going to do? What I'm talking, a special day I'm talking about, of course, is National Star Wars Day. We've just celebrated on May the 4th. Get it? May the 4th be with you. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and that's a day where you can talk like Yoda you do. And Star Wars gives you an answer. So what are you going to do with your life? The most recent Star Wars movie came out at Christmas time. And the young heroine, Rey, she met an old hero, Han Solo, in a, in a spaceship. And Rey said to him, there are stories about what happened. And Han Solo said, it's, it's true, all of it. The dark side, the Jedi, they're real. So hang on to that. Is the dark side real? Well, you bet. And just look around. There's evil in the world. War turns children into slaves and soldiers. War creates millions of refugees. Syria, half the country, a million, 11 million people displaced from their homes. Many of them have fled the country. And these refugees are vulnerable to disease, hunger, and human predators. War sows the seeds of future wars. It feeds extremists like ISIS. And the environment is affected by evil. Pope Francis wrote an encyclical on care for our common home. St. Francis of Assisi reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life. Earth is like a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. Yet pollution, waste, and a throwaway culture are wounding her. Pope Francis writes, water poverty especially affects Africa, where large sectors of the population have no access to safe drinking water or experience droughts which impede agricultural production, he wrote. Each year sees the disappearance of thousands of plants and animal species. The great majority have become extinct for reasons related to human activity. And he concludes, we have no such right. Evil affects human life and dignity. Abortion stops one heart and breaks another. It has made children into a commodity that can be cut up and sold like car parts. We treat our pets better than we treat our unborn children. We fret about presidential primaries. That's only the tip of the iceberg of what's really at stake. Evil is real. It seeks to destroy all that is good in the world. It wants you and me dead, spiritually and physically. In the movie Star Wars, some scoffed at the dark side, but they soon learned their lesson. It cost them their life. So evil is not just in the movies. It is terribly real. In 
the most recent Star Wars movie, The Force Awakens, a character named Finn didn't know where he was going, didn't know what he wanted, didn't have an answer to the question, so what do you want to do with your life? But he knew only where he did not want to go, what he did not want to be. And he did not want to be a stormtrooper working for the evil First Order. He did not want to slaughter people anymore. So he decided to run away. Finn needed a pilot to escape the Star Destroyer, so he rescued a, a pilot. They boarded a, a black TIE fighter and escaped, but then they crash-landed on the planet Jakku, and then Finn wandered across the desert discarding his stormtrooper armor. Eventually, he partnered with Rey, who assumed that Finn was a resistance fighter fighting against the evil First Order. But Finn let her go along with that. But still being fearful of being recaptured by the First Order, he ran away again and uh, joined a crew to ship out to the Outer Rim. But he did come back. Later in the movie, he comes back to help rescue Rey from the evil Kylo Ren. When the movie ends, Finn doesn't know it yet, what he will do with his life. But you do. His destiny was to do more than run away. His destiny is more than rescue a friend. His destiny is nothing less than a defeat of darkness itself. So what are you going to do exactly? Well, look at what the Lord has done about evil. Look what the Lord has done for you. A long time ago in Galilee, far, far away, God sent his only son, not to condemn the world, but to save it. And you know the stories. He's born in a stable, surrounded by sheep and donkeys. His mother, Mary, and father, Joseph, became refugees, fleeing from the mortal lives from the evil King Herod. And he preached the kingdom of God, where the blind can see, the deaf can hear, the lame can walk, good news preached to the poor and the oppressed set free. And the greatest work he did was not his teaching, not his healing, not his even his forgiving, but making the kingdom come through his own death. He gave himself over to his enemies to be tortured and crucified and executed. But that is not the end of the story. It is simply the beginning. On Easter Sunday, the third day, he rose from the dead. Buried in a tomb with a stone sealed across it, three days later the stone was rolled away and the tomb was empty. Jesus appeared to his disciples. He was resurrected. He walked on the road to Emmaus with two of them and broke bread with them. He appeared to the disciples in the upper room and ate with them. He appeared to them while they were fishing and invited them to breakfast on the beach. And 40 days later, after he rose from the dead, he took his disciples to Bethany. He raised his hands and blessed them and was parted from them as he's taken up to heaven. And today commemorates his ascension into heaven, that Christ is indeed seated at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for us. He has given our mortal flesh immortal value that matter matters. These stories are true, truer than true. They make everything else matter. So graduates, you who are Christians, this is your destiny. As the force gives power to the Jedi, the Lord gives power to you. We commemorate next Sunday in the great feast of Pentecost, the Lord giving this power to the church. The power to speak the truth in love, the power to turn the other cheek to violence, the power to be merciful as the Father is merciful, to stand up for what is right, even when it costs you convenience, money, your plans, your life. In a word, the power to sacrifice. That first Star Wars movie over 30 years ago had a poster, and the image, central image of the poster was young Luke Skywalker with a, a, a sword, a laser sword, pointing up to heaven. This lightsaber pointing up to heaven was a sign of victory, but also a sign of where the victory lied, where it was going, to heaven. And that's your destiny. Joining with Christ in his victory on the cross and resurrection to defeat darkness, wherever it may be, 
and help the Lord make the kingdom come here and now. Those stories from long ago, far away from Easter, they're true. All of them. So when they ask you, well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do exactly? Well, you don't have to say it out loud, but why not? Just tell them, you know, just tell them. Like Jesus, make the kingdom come. The Lord, go to him. Just let him in.